helping Southeast Georgia and the Lowcountry. This is WJCL 22 Morning News. See us now. Breaking right now, a destructive house fire forcing several people out of their home. We're live on the scene there with a look at the aftermath. A shakeup in the Republican presidential race. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis dropping out. He didn't call. He didn't text. He didn't tell me that he was going to do this. And the endorsement standoff between Nikki Haley and South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. 44 yards pass. No, he doesn't make it. Wide right. The NFL Conference Championships are set. The local college kicker who's facing some heat from fans this morning. We want to thank you so much for waking up with us right here on WJCL 22. Good morning. I'm Emma Hamilton. And I'm Frank Sulkowski, meteorologist Victoria Kokinos. <laughs> You're having a really hard time with Everything is harder on, on Monday morning, <laughs> and it's really hard when you walk outside and it's 31 degrees. Very cold out there, Vic. It definitely is. Thankfully, this is the last cold morning for thank the week. Awesome. So. That is great yeah, news. That, that's great news because tomorrow I may get your name right and your title. Oh, Look at go. you. <laughs> meteorologist is a hard word. It's fine. It's okay. But yeah, definitely a cold start to the day as we head through the afternoon we'll start to warm up and then this kick, kicks off our warming trend for the entire week so right now temperatures like Frank said 31 degrees in Savannah inland areas are in those upper 20s now the feel like temperature for everyone is in the mid to low 20s so it's definitely a cold start to the day bundle up as you head out the door now we will keep mostly sunny skies as we head through your Monday afternoon and temperatures will sit below average but it's definitely warmer than this weekend 58 degrees by 3 p.m. and then clouds will actually increase as we head towards it's Monday night, partly to mostly cloudy through the overnight hours into Tuesday. And because of that, temperatures won't drop too much. By 7 p.m., we're at 55 degrees and not as chilly as we head towards Tuesday. And then temperatures are on the rise, feeling more spring-like as we head towards midweek. So I'll go over the details for that coming up in a few minutes. Frank Emma. All right, thanks so much, Victoria. Well, we are staying on top of some breaking news out of Wilmington Island this morning where a fire has destroyed a home. WJCL 22 News is AJ Sisson joining us live from the scene. Yeah, and AJ, what can you tell us? Yeah, so right now I'm live here in Wilmington Island, right on Oak Leaf Drive, where a fire left three adults displaced. Walk with me here. I want to show you kind of what this house fire did. It left a shell of a home. You can see on the roof here that the roof is almost caved in. It almost seems like if this house wasn't made out of brick, it would have caved in already. The paint absolutely stripped off the walls, the wall, the wood completely exposed. It's a terrible scene here. And honestly, I just want to show you where we are right now. This is Oak Leaf Drive in between Walt Hour Road and Penn Waller Road, just down the road from the Kroger here on Wilmington Island. Now the fire happened just after 11 p.m. on Sunday night when Chatham Emergency Services arrived at the scene. They say that they saw smoke and flames billowing up from inside of this single story home. They say it took 30 minutes to bring the fire under control. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Now, the scene is clear, and when you last saw me, there was a fire truck that came onto the scene. All they were doing was checking to make sure that there wasn't any residual fires left in the house to spark up, but they are still working on figuring out what the cause of the fire was. As we figure out more information, we'll update you on air and online at WJCL.com. Back to you guys. All right, our AJ Sisson live for us out on Wilmington Island this morning. AJ, thank you so much. I'd like to take time to congratulate Ron DeSantis. I also look forward to working with Ron. It's going to be me. And I know y'all want to talk about it like it's still him. This morning, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is no longer in the race to the White House. He is now endorsing former President Donald Trump after announcing that he is suspending his campaign. Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene took to social media, calling DeSantis' decision a great move. In a post on X, she went on to say, quote, Now all that's left is Liz Cheney, I mean Nikki Haley, to drop out and stop lighting tens of millions of dollars on fire, unquote. Well, today, former President Donald Trump and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, they're both going to be in New Hampshire ahead of the state's Republican primary tomorrow. Yeah, and the battle over endorsements heating up between Haley and former Republican presidential candidate and South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. Mm -hmm. WJCL 22 News' is Savannah Younger joining us in the studio to tell us all about it. Savannah. Yeah, Frank, for the first time, Nikki Haley is speaking out after Senator Tim Scott announced he's endorsing Trump back on Friday. 
He didn't call, he didn't text, he didn't tell me that he was going to do this. I texted him and said, look, I want to sit down and talk because we had only um, spoken once. Since then, I said, I'd love to sit down and talk about an endorsement. He said, I'm getting with my team to figure that out. And I never heard anything else again until his endorsement. It's important to note that Haley was governor of the state when she appointed him to his Senate seat back in 2012. Now take a listen to what Senator Scott said about why he chose Trump instead of a candidate from his seat of South Carolina. I'm not asking a question about who's from my home state. I'm not asking a question who would be a, a, a good person or a better person. I think President Donald Trump is a strong president will be a strong president again. Frank, back to you. All right, well, Savannah, besides Scott, are there any other South Carolina legislators supporting the former president? Yes, South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster and Senator Lindsey Graham are also backing Trump's campaign. All right, our Savannah Younger live in the studio this morning. Thanks so much, Savannah. Well, early voting starts today in South Carolina's Democratic primary. Early voting will end Friday, February 2nd. And Democratic primary day will be next Saturday, February the 3rd. In the Republican primary, early voting starts Monday, February 12th, ends Thursday, the 22nd. The Republican primary is Saturday, February 24th. And a reminder that you can keep up with all the important dates and any changes in the presidential race. All you got to do is download the WJCL 22 News app, or you can visit our website, WJCL.com. 1050 Country Place, Swamp Creek, Swamp Creek Drive, dead end. New this morning, a wild high-speed deputy chase in Georgia, all caught on camera. Deputies say that the chase all started when the suspect allegedly stole a car. Now, take a look at what happened here after a deputy tried to pull off a pit maneuver, and one of the suspects jumps out of the moving car. 1050. Now, you can see right there the driver, he hops out of the car and he takes off running as the car continues to barrel straight towards that house. Once it does crash into the side, you see that other person, they were the passenger, they jump out and they take off too. Now, the Fayette County Sheriff's Office, they shared this heart-pounding footage on Facebook and says that they did eventually catch those suspects. Well, this morning, new video shows the moment that one of the best players in college basketball crashed into a fan after an overtime thriller. Check out what happened after number two Iowa fell to Ohio State last night. Now you can see we highlighted it right here. And if you take a look to the bottom right of your screen where you see that uh, white circle there. It's where Iowa star player Caitlin Clark. She fell to the ground after she crashed into an Ohio State fan who was rushing the court. Fans stormed the court after the Buckeyes scored that big upset win, beating number two Iowa, uh, number two Iowa State to 100 to 92 last night. From the hardwood to the gridiron, there are only four teams left in the NFL playoffs, and this morning we want to know. Who are you pulling for to win the Super Bowl? You can vote right now in our live interactive poll by scanning the QR code on your screen or by visiting WJCL.com slash vote. Do you want the Kansas City Chiefs to win it all? How about the Baltimore Ravens or the Detroit Lions? Perhaps you're cheering for the San Francisco 49ers. While you vote, ABC's Derek Dennis has a look at the drama in Detroit and Buffalo where history was made and the other game? Where it seemed history was repeating itself. And the Chiefs are going to be going to Baltimore. This morning, Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs are headed to their sixth consecutive AFC championship game after holding off the Bills at a back and forth game that came down to the wire. The Bills with a chance to tie it late, but then. No, he doesn't make it! Grown men crying in the stands as the Bills suffer yet another heartbreak. The miss eerily similar to this Super Bowl classic back in 1991. It is no good! There's one, one happy team at the end of the season, really. And uh, when it's not you and you're, and you're so close, it just it sucks. It was the Bills' defense that lost this game. Mahomes and the Chiefs' offense firing on all cylinders. And it's always fun when you get to come together as a team and really just be like y'all versus, versus everybody and, and get the win. Kelsey has the touchdown! 
Travis Kelsey scoring two of the Chiefs' three touchdowns, his famous brother Jason celebrating shirtless, chugging a beer as Taylor Swift joined him, cheering on the Chiefs. End zone! Touchdown, Detroit! Meanwhile, cheers in the Motor City as the Lions move one step closer to something we've never seen before, Detroit in the Super Bowl. The Lions dismissing the Bucks 31-23 to to advance to the NFC title game. Elated fans celebrating in the streets. Go Lions! Woo! The last time the Lions won a championship, I was nine years old, and I've been a loyal fan since 1950. I mean, I've been waiting for this for a long, long time. Back in Buffalo, a player on the Chiefs claimed the team's hot water was shut off in the locker room, but we could not confirm that overnight. The Chiefs take on the Ravens in Baltimore at 3 p.m. Eastern Sunday, followed by the Lions and 49ers at 6.30 Eastern. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. And checking in on that poll, as you can see, 52% say they mm -hmm. want the Lions to win yep. it all. And why not? Because Detroit hasn't been there. And it's one of those things that you cheer for the underdog or something that you haven't seen before. I mean, let's be honest. The Chiefs and the Ravens and 40, they've had plenty of success. Mm -hmm. The Lions haven't. So I'm with them. I'm cheering for the Lions, although I think it may be Baltimore and the 49ers in the I Super Bowl. I think so, Could yeah. You? Well, they've been saying that for a while, too. Like, yeah, I mean, that, that would be the uh, dream scenario for folks in the NFL. you got major markets right there being represented. So we'll see. Who knows? We'll find out this weekend, won't we? Yeah, you can vote all morning, wjcl.com slash vote. Let's take a quick look at traffic now for the early morning commute. I-16 east and westbound towards I-95 is in the clear for the moment. Doesn't look like there's any backup there as we head towards downtown Savannah. Also, everything moving smoothly. I-95 north and southbound doesn't look like many cars out on the roadway. So if you are heading out the door, not looking like too much traffic. Definitely have the heaters on, though, in your car. Let's go ahead and take a live look outside right now in traffic. Here's a live look at East Oglethorpe Avenue at Drayton Street. This is in downtown Savannah. Doesn't look like many cars out there. Some people walking their dogs, but everything moving smoothly towards downtown. All right, thanks so much, Victoria. Time check for you. It is now 611. Secret trips and a scandal involving Fulton County's district attorney, a co-defendant of former President Donald Trump, accusing her of having an affair with a prosecutor. Coming out, what was found in his credit card statements. Plus a warning for parents whose kids play sports year round, the damage it could cause and how you can help ease their stress. And here's a live look towards Buford. Definitely a cold start to the day. 36 degrees. Feel like temperature right now is much colder, sitting around 30. Bundle up as you head out the door. We do have a warming trend on the way. If you want to jump start on that 10-day forecast, remember you can download our WJCL 22 News app. It's free.